Uh, Mr. Whiteford, it's me again. Uh, guess who just walked in down there and handed me his coat? Al Pacino. Can you believe it? This place is crawling with famous people. Donald Trump looked right at me and asked me for a glass of Dom Perignon. I told him I was taking coats. <laughs> My first night in New York and I'm high-fiving Denzel Washington. I'm pretty sure I saw Rosie O'Donnell talking to the Pope. <laughs> Thank you for this opportunity, Mr. Piper. This could be the break I needed. Oh, I, I got the talent, sir. All I need is the opportunity to show. Wasn't it wonderful? Yes, I'll be right now. Ha <laughs> ha, thank you. I've seen this one somewhere, too. <laughs>
same one. <laughs> hello, hello. Huh? Oh, she just finished it. Yeah, so this is your first big Broadway ball. Oh, my first anything. Uh, I, I just got here. There I was, wandering around Times Square, looking pretty green with my suitcase, when a total stranger approached me, a producer slash agent slash photographer. He could have approached anyone, but he approached me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a real New York story. <laughs> he got me this job tonight, and he's going to take some pictures of me when I get back. <laughs> Don't get back. Oh, I'm staying with him. He, he keeps a spare room for people like me. <laughs> Maybe you know him, Peter Piper? No, but I know the type. <laughs> Oh, there, give me this. <coughs> Hello, 
Hello, California. This is Virginia Noise, and I just opened on Broadway, and you can all go fuck yourself. <laughs>
Oh, that was worth the wait. Oh, oh, I am sorry. You want a hit? Oh, no, thank you. I had some at home. Okay. <laughs> How about you, sweetheart? Oh, I gotta stay on the ball tonight. Oh, take this before I want more. I love your work, Miss Knowles. Oh, thanks. I'm sure I'll love yours. Don't get them started. <laughs> that scene with the frogs? Huh? Oh, those goddamn fucking frogs. <laughs> That's all anybody talks about. Look, you bring me a vodka stinger, I'll tell you all about those frogs. Coming right up, sweetheart. <laughs>
you by men I don't know and don't care to. And everybody's darling this, darling that. Doesn't anybody have a fucking name? Do you know what I say? Puke on those phonies. Puke all over them. Oh, I might take a dump on them. What about that is? A big dump. Dump. Opening nights are dreadful. All that nervous insincerity. And waiting for the reviews is torture. Can you imagine what it must be like for them? Uh, hello, I'm James Wicker. I know who you are. Well, you're the first person this evening who does. <laughs> hey, do you know who's reviewing for New York One now? Some idiot. She gave me that incredible raid for Peter's play. They're all idiots. It's a job requirement. Along with dandruff and personal hygiene issues. Oh, they're just doing their jobs. Reviews are what is killing the theatre. Good ones aren't. <laughs> I'm still trying to get my niece a pair for Wicked. <laughs> are you cold? I'm always cold. I've been cold all my life. <laughs> How much do you think something like this is worth? Several thousand dollars, I should think. Several thousand dollars for a box. Well, it's more than just a box. It's an antique box. And someone like Arto and the entire theater of cruelty died in total poverty. <laughs> well, I, I don't think Mrs. Butter personally killed them. And whoever they were, they don't sound like very nice people. They weren't. That's why the theater needed them. We are overrun with nice people. We need shits and sons of bitches if we're ever going to get it right again. <laughs> I saw that. What? You're putting me in an extremely difficult position. Okay. Oh, here we go, the first review. <laughs> New York One's theater critic was at Barrymore Theater for the opening of a new play tonight. May I have that? Well, it's like this. Peter Austin is eagerly awaiting his play, The Golden Egg. And love that title is... What happened? I don't believe in reviews. Are you crazy? Turn that back on. Working in an idiom totally dissimilar from his previous play, almost as if they were in what is the matter with you? Watching only encourages them. I would like to know what you think. Why do you care? She's a critic. She's an asshole. That's not the point. What is the point? What the asshole thinks. <laughs> I'd rather know what you thought. I loved it. You loved it. Yes, I loved it. What do you want from me? Your honest opinion. All right. My, my, my best friend wrote it for me and I turned it down because I thought it was a piece of shit. And I want to know if that asshole agrees with me. <laughs> Your best friend. Peter. Peter Austin. Peter Austin wrote a piece of shit for you. Well, not on purpose. <laughs> In this business, we're all capable of shit. I know, I've watched your series. <laughs> Superb, no, I take that back. Perfect staging by Frank Finger, a brilliant young English director who gave us last season's ravishing part of the Look who directed it. Oh, please, don't give me Frank Finger. You're talking to someone who actually sat through his all-male Medea at bear. I took my poor mother. I think that's what killed her. <laughs> I'm Frank Finger. But it was wonderful. <laughs> she was very old. Everyone said it was her time. <laughs> so you're Frank Finger? It's Sir uh, Frank, actually. O-B-E. O-B-E. Order of the British Empire. Thank you. Isn't it exciting? I'll be right down. There she is! I did it! I did it! I did it! I'm a real life Broadway producer! Look out, Broadway! Here comes Julia Butter! Not only is Julia Butter the luckiest producer in New York, she's also the prettiest. I am no longer part of the herd of investors who call themselves producers. When they announce the best play Tony Award winner this year, it will be just me walking to the podium to accept. Last year, they counted 85 of us up there. <laughs> Variety called it the Night of the Locusts. <laughs> I will walk with great pride and dignity, blowing kisses to all who suffer. Run like your queen, Sir Frank. And when I make my acceptance speech, just let that orchestra dare to cut me 
I'll talk all night if I want to. Tell Julia what you thought of the play. I uh, loved it. Please don't handle that, James. It's extremely delicate. Yeah, thanks to me, you're lucky you still have it. Have you seen that mob down there? I don't know half of them. I certainly didn't invite the cast of a delicate balance. <laughs> You look just like Hillary Clinton. She said, I certainly hope so. I am Hillary Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> Irving Berlin said it best. There's no business like the one we're in. <laughs> you got that almost right. You heard the other one? I didn't. Thanks to your, to, to your direct writing. I never forget it. My first review. Good stop. Theater. Good, solid theater. You have to imagine it blown up. I was hoping for something with a little more oomph in it, but coming from them, our press agent says it's a raise. Who's your press agent? Buzz. Buzz something. He talks in his field. Do you really think we have a chance? It's going to be the biggest hit in Broadway since God knows when. God knows when. Don't tell me. Let me guess. <laughs> If the reviews aren't good, 
I don't think I can face anyone, certainly not you. If anything happens to me, you are in no way to blame. Goodbye, remember me on the bed, and good luck with the Carol Churchill. Will you play it often? P.S. I still wish you'd given me that turntable in the second act. And for this, we're missing the party of the year. Well, where is he then? No, Peter's a genius at the actors. You've heard of the late entrance? It's an old stunt. Believe me, I do it all the time, shall we? Where do all those cubs belong to? The Lion King. <laughs> They're all saying you've got a big hit on your hands, Mrs. Butter, honey. With <laughs> your lips to God's ears, the chat rooms have been brutal to us. Julia, you go into the chat rooms? Well, everyone's in the chat rooms. I'm the only one who admits it. Those people are sociopaths. They buy tickets like everyone else. I'm in the chat rooms. You see, James? I'm slave to Sondheim 11. <laughs> Sounds positively dirty. I love your posts. I love yours. Uh, oh, they're having the time of their lives down there. Betty Buckley just finished singing Stormy Weather, and Renee Fleming burst into something from Fast. You're missing your own party, girlfriend. We are on our way. As Betty Davis said, fasten your safety belts. <laughs> What's the matter? PPS. The play never really had a chance without James Wicker in it. Of course, he was a son of a bitch not to have done it. And I wish him and his stupid series a sudden and violent death. Though I personally bear him no hard feelings. <laughs> the miserable, no talent sitcom fruit. I'm sure he doesn't mean that side of the no either. No hard feelings, the miserable no talent sitcom fruit. You? No talent? <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. Well, you certainly came across a hell of a lot better than I did. Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> I pretended I didn't know he knew I knew who he was. He's coming a bad moment, darling. No, Julia, I'm fine. Let's go. You know, if, if you can face the chat rooms, I can face my best friend's true colors. I was hoping I could sing something tonight. I don't see why not. If Catherine's a Jones head. No, I'm here for you and an audition. I don't do musicals. Ever since Mamma Mia, I thought to myself, why bother? <laughs> but go ahead. I believe we of this theater should extend a helping hand whenever we can. Julia. I'll only be a moment. What are you going to sing for us, Gus? Defying gravity. <laughs> it's my prayer and most private number. It could only be Elliot. <laughs> Darling, how are you? She was going to hear me sing. And I'm sure you're wonderful, <laughs> just Wonderful, but they're calling for you downstairs, guys. I can hear them way up here. <laughs> of course you're getting good treatment, darling. We gave them a whole million. Your wife has a big fat hit on her hands, Elliot. Jimmy Wicker, he flew all the way into the opening. Elliot says he met you, did. And if it was any other man but you in my bedroom, he'd be very, very jealous. <laughs> Factory in the Dominican Republic while we're ahead. And consider buying up those Toyota dealerships in Zaire. <laughs> That's exactly what I told you. People can live without a scalpel, but they can't live without their cars. Uh, mm -hmm. Blue Stocking, a new play by Caroline Comstock. Nothing. Ten seconds of this. Sixteen points is sixteen 
lights. The lights come up on a green chair. It is empty. A woman screams in the distance. Or is it a woman? We hear a flourish of wind. Or is it wind? <laughs> How do you like it so uh, far? Uh, uh, I, I'm afraid this room is awfully. I just need a quick word with Mrs. Butter. Talk about killing two birds with one stone. I beg your pardon. I gave you a wonderful review once. You did. That little Lord complaint at the end of the lease before it was the hotel. No, that was Gordon Small. Oh, Gordon Small, of course, wonderful actor. I know. Wendy Watson esteems uncommon women. Doesn't all female cats. <laughs> You're right, but you never know these days. <laughs> I was having some fun with you. I know who you are. James Wacker is a constant. His guilt in veterinarian is a master class. <laughs> I never forget what I write about that. Wait, James Wicker. I know that. You said Wacker. <laughs> <laughs> and you are? <laughs> I'm sorry, it's Ira Drew. The Ira Drew? There's another. Yeah. 
wisdom, love, valor, compassion. One set in the cast of two. The chief theater critic for the New York Times, Ben Bradley, told me on the QT that he loves it. There's a rumor I'm confirmed that the playwright is his boyfriend's niece. I didn't know Mr. Bradley had a niece. <laughs> Next thing you'll be telling us you wrote it. Caroline Comstock wrote the stuff. Caroline is only my protege. Nothing more and nothing less. I really spend Dolly to her trilby, take Mary to a gallows head. Why are you telling us this? Uh, we need new faces in the theater. New voices, new visions. But Caroline's day is coming, Mrs. Butler. Yours as a producer. Can you come with her? Thank you, Mr. Drew, but I'm concentrating on Peter Austin's day tonight. Aladdin and Rock of Ages. <laughs> I thought Rock of Ages closed. They did. No one told them yet. Thank you, Bob. Surfing sugar. <laughs> Can he be trusted? He's bonded, if that means anything. No one must know of this meeting. It is highly unethical and critic giving a commercial producer an exclusive leak and would compromise the three of us. The three of us, what did I do? Well, Blue Stocking was written for you, Mr. Wicker. Two minutes ago, you were wondering what happened to him. Wait, I tell Miss Comstock I found you. I place my reputation as an ethical journalist in your hands. <laughs> Thank you for your consideration, Mr. Wicker. Thank you for your inside lead, Mr. Drew. I'm always looking for the right vehicle. Oh, hold me here. He was certainly the last person I expected to see here tonight. The American theater would be a better place today if Peter Austin's parents had smothered him in his crib. <laughs> I can produce a review of her flashes. What a horrible thing to say about anyone, even a playwright. And then in the same breath, he gives me the review of a lifetime and puts me on the map. I don't know how you people stand it. Thank God they don't review producers. Only our players. Oh, all my life, all my life, my dream, they yell, author, author. When I walked into my opening night party, they did, but it was for Tom Stoppard, who was right behind me. <laughs> oh, all probably a half of Hollywood down there. Steven Spielberg asked me if I wanted to write a student play there. Well, sure, I said, what about? Good point, he said, and walked away. <laughs> evening like this is every playwright's right of passage. There he is, America's oldest living, most promising young playwright. Hello, Peter. Jimmy, Jimmy, you gave. <laughs> On the goddamn red eye, of course I gave. Oh, maybe I can get through all of you, my best friend here. Julia, Julia, do you know who this is? <laughs> of course I do. Oh, I love this man. I don't care who knows that I love this person. I love my love. Now, where the heck? You, you promise not to laugh? Yeah. Now, I've been walking the streets thinking about what it means to be a playwright. Oh, that's so dear. No, I mean it. I so do I. That's a wonderful thing to be thinking of. I wish more playwrights did. <laughs> a streetcar named Desire opened at the same theater that we did tonight, December 3rd, 1947. <laughs> Tennessee Williams paced nervously in the back of our orchestra, just like I did. I could feel it. Ilya and Kazan faced there with them. I felt them both. I bet they held hands and squealed like schoolgirls when that curtain first went up. It's from our stage where Marlon Brando first yelled Stella, and Blanche DuBois told the world she had always depended on the kindness of strangers. We have a lot to live up to tonight. It depends on us to remind this city that there is more to Broadway with it. Guest appearances and special effects and revivals or another play from London? <laughs> or another Disney movie, Made in Honor? <laughs> we are a rich American play. We must make that count for something. Amen. That was beautifully stated, Peter. Uh, I'll get off my soapbox now. Before I knew it, the first act was over, and everybody was out on the sidewalk. I saw you there, Jimmy, talking to Bernadette Peters. She was bent over, double us, something you were saying. <laughs> like you were imitating a giant chicken. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> uh, God, you're a funny man. Too funny by half. 
the lights clicked on and off, everybody went back in for the second act. And that's when I began to take it all in. I was on Broadway. I was part of something bigger than myself. I was where I dreamed of being all my life. I started walking around the theater. <coughs> so many memories of plays, actors, great productions. As of tonight, I was now a part of them. I saw that flat to O'Neill. On this spot stood the hotel that was birthplace to the great American dramatist. And I knew that there would never be such a plaque for any American playwright again. No matter how great a writer he was, unless we did something about it. We'd let Broadway stop there and handed it over to the Brits, the movies and musical franchises, lock, stock, and barrel. Well, it's our fault, not theirs. Nature abhors a vacuum, and they rushed right in. We all got so greedy. The theater became a business to me. When it should be a place to talk to one another, in a mutual dialogue between stage and audience about what it means to be alive in this country in the first decades of the new century. I walked to Schubert Alley, to what's left of it, and stood looking at the three sheets when a British revival of Greece and the Kardashians in Three Sisters are the best we can all It's time to weep. With tears in my eyes, I looked at the Marriott. They tore down three theaters to put up a hotel. Well, who let this happen? There are no more where they came from. Tear down the theater, it's forever. You don't get a salesman or an Oklahoma when you tear down the theater. You get a Marriott. <laughs> when I finally turned back on 47th Street, our play was over, and everyone was gone, but our marquee was still with The Golden Egg, a new play by Peter Austin. I looked at it, and I thought of Williams and O'Neill, and Miller and Alton, and I thought, we can make a change. We can turn back the tide. But this time, it's entirely up to us. And then somebody turned the lights down, and we went dark. End of speech. <laughs> Sorry, I somehow got back up on it again. And I was, and I was telling your leading lady I didn't miss all this. So I I cry at food displays. <laughs> Next play, I promise you that turntable. Next play, I'm going to want two turntables. Now, can I tell you something and you'll promise not to laugh? I, one of the reasons I produced your play, other than its brilliance, and it gave me goosebumps, is that it doesn't have any four-letter words in it. I think I got all the four-letter words out of my system in my first play. All the things he had me saying, Julie. I'm sorry, but I think the theater should be a place of elegance. Elegant people, in elegant clothes, in elegant settings, speaking elegant language. So much for David Mamet. <laughs> Last night I saw every other word was the F word, or the S word, or the K word. I was appalled. <laughs>
Jason Pierce's surface. And guess how many times I grew up today, actually bent over the bowl and beat my guts up, even not too close. <laughs> yeah, man, don't you give up that <laughs> What are you with? Some down there's gonna ask you to get them in print if you're not there. <laughs> my father's tails in his honor. Uh, they're almost in style again. <laughs> how are you, folks? That's funny, my man. I thought a Broadway opening might be too much for me. But I'll be happy to give them. Well, where are you sitting? The sheriff. Of course, he's in the small sheriff, but the network is paying. So did you invite any of the old gang? No, just you. Uh, we're, we're practically the only ones still in the business. Billy Cutland is teaching at NYU. Mary went back to school to get a degree in social work. I've lost track of most of them. <laughs> Mary had real talent, but she'd be the one of us who'd make it. Oh, I wanted you up there on that stage so fast, man. We, we were going to do this whole Broadway thing together. Who knew an empty pilot would turn into nine years of my life? We waited as long as we could for you. But Jack was marvelous, didn't you think? Mm. <laughs> Wonderful. If Tony and Ward Tom Toms are already from it. Well, he wasn't that wonderful. I mean, <laughs> that part had my name on it. But, but he was wonderful. Just one. I, I could be more wonderful. I felt so corrupt when you went to L.A. I had such a talent crush on you. It was mutual. I didn't know what I was going to do. Nobody hears me like you. I thought you were the best actor I ever worked with. I was afraid when you left, you took my talent with you. Now that's why tonight is so important to me. I, I did it without you. We'll do something together again, I'm sure. You really like the play? No, neither I. I'm the, uh, <clears throat> the last person to ask. I was, <clears throat> I was a, I was a talented character. I won a thousand in the city when I met. I would have gone on having ten lines in each act for the rest of my life. Once I would have played Bully Longman or Iceman in a regional theater, maybe my agent wouldn't mind traveling. And I would have gone on thinking I was not. I was a working actor. And then you went and wrote classes for me. When I finished it, I would open up. It was extraordinary. But I thought, he'll get some of us. They'll make him get some of us. But you didn't. <coughs> make no mistake. I'm a very lucky man, and I know I'm lucky. I saw you do those 10 lines in that weird play at the Cherry Lane. No, no, it was 14 lines. I was in a roll that season. <laughs> Jack was really okay tonight in your part last night. Peter, Jack was just fine. Ah, now he was just fine. And they're, they're gonna love your play. What if they don't? The Broadway isn't the be all and end all. Tonight it is. Jack, come out. Julia, who do you have to fuck to get some food around here? <laughs> Me, darling. <laughs> your laurels, Mr. Tony Kushner. Here comes the next generation. Shall we go now? I'll be surprised if there's anything left. That fucking Channel 5. <laughs> that fucking faggot dyke. Hermaphrodite. <laughs> Transsexual, whatever the hell you call that thing they have for a critic. I just told a room full of people to shut up. They could hear someone say Virginia noise stinks. I'm sure Channel 5 can say Virginia noise stinks. Maybe something like it, but not those exact words. Virginia noise stinks. You could hear a pin drop when they said it. Virginia noise stinks. Do I hear? Do I stink? Oh, no. Oh, oh, you are wonderful. Oh, everything I could have asked for and more. I know you took a chance on me, but not many people would have. Oh, oh I love our play. It's old. It's Beautiful. I wanted to be a part of it, but above all, I didn't want to let you and you of all people. I could never forgive myself. You could never uh, let me down. You're my first and only choice for this part. Oh, I'm feeling very fragile right now. Peter's my darling. <coughs> wonderful tonight. No matter what happens with the critics, you must never forget that. You were wonderful. Do I know you? <laughs> Virginia, darling, your producer. Oh, yeah, right. Thanks. Hi. Hi. You want a hit? <laughs> of course I want a hit. Everybody at this party wants a hit. 
what you will about me, cunt on TV. I'm an honest actress. So I decided to make it part of the scene. That's why I started twitching my leg before I went into that sort of dance. <laughs> Jack was totally startled, of course. He likes everything set and rehearsed. It's so boring. I have to be in the moment. The nanny second I call him. It's where I live as an actress. If they ever let me drive again, I mean, yeah. one of those custom place and place. Act free or die. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
stunts here in New York, and everybody says it's brilliant. It is brilliant. Well, I hate it. God, Miss Rada. And I'm sure Rada misses you. <laughs> Does anyone remember what food tastes like? <laughs> so now I'm gonna die if I don't eat them. I don't want these things. Please don't leave them around. <laughs>
wax. I had to start carrying one after my review of Julie Andrews. <laughs> <laughs> However, I enjoyed your performance, Miss Noyes. It's real star quality. It's what our theater needs. I, I like your work closer, Finger. It's Sir Frank. And I always do. What happened to you down there? Oh, the plate of lasagna was piled the wall. Quick lip was the president of the dramatist's guild. He took a swing at you? She took several swings at you. The next thing I knew, I was on the floor, and Alan Baldwin was kicking me. <laughs> I understand he's never turned on anyone before tonight. He oh. smells blood like everyone else. I hope this won't affect your review of Peter's play. Critics can't afford to hold petty grudges. Besides, Waiting for Ben Brackley in the Times is what tonight is all about. Who cares what a non-entity like me thinks? You are not a non-entity, and you are very well thought of. You are also the most vicious critic in New York. Oh, throw that in my face. She reminds me of nothing so much as a female impersonator <laughs> in search of a female to impersonate. <laughs> Even a female impersonator. <laughs> I said that about the Baby June in the Cape May Playhouse production of Gypsy years ago. It's, it's curious you should remember it. I was the Baby June in the Cape May Playhouse production of Gypsy. You changed your name? After your review, I changed my face. <laughs> I was getting surgery for a 14 year old. The stakes are so high for an original American play on Broadway right now. We're all a little bit over the top. I'm Peter Austin. Get away from me! I, I, I'll shoot! I, 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 I haven't written my review yet! This is I'm entitled to, to writing my plays. You're entitled to your opinion of them. Fair enough. Fortunately for me, my parents didn't take your advice and smother me in my crib. <laughs> Very glad they didn't. I love the theater. It's what people are doing to it, I guess, then. It's not on purpose, Mr. Drew. I'm rough, please. I'm so glad to see you two came along. The funniest thing, I like you personally. We all do. It's just your work, I can't stand. <laughs> Hear a playwright's prayer, Lord. Listen to the humble plea of thy servant, Peter, descendant of Aeschylus, Shakespeare, Moliere, Ibsen, and Chekhov. What the hell is he doing? Bless me and my meager skills, with which I've tried only to amuse and treat Provoke, stimulate, and move an audience while creating believable characters in true-to-life situations that somehow illuminate the human experience. Oh, Peter. Plus thy humble producer servant, Julia. Oh, how <laughs> Plus all producers who put our plays on and keep them running, even when it means enormous financial sacrifice for their husbands, and puts their children's future at risk. I don't care about that, Peter. You know I don't. Bless that humble actress servant, Virginia, who gave the performance of a lifetime to me. Bless her courage for returning to live theater after the safety of the silver screen. Tom, Virginia. Bless her for her unique time and wonderful voice. Bless her for being almost letter perfect in her part. <laughs> Plus <laughs> thy humble director servant, Sir Frank Finger, who rumor has it is soon to be Lord Finger. You didn't hear it from me. Bless him for returning my iPad, which mysteriously vanished. <laughs> Bless him for his unbroken string of successes. Bless all directors with an unbroken string of successes. Amen! That was beautiful. Can we go downstairs now? Bless my friend James, my humble television series star servant, who had to turn my play down, and so we came up with Jack, for whom everyone says there is a definite Tony nomination, if not award, in all of this. Bless Jack and his Tony nomination, if not award. Ah. Also bless James's series, which is rumored to be going off the air. Where did you hear that? New York Post, page six. <laughs> bless thy humble critic servant, Ira. Bless all critics who are really failed playwrights. <laughs> you become critics out of desperation. But 
they mean well, and they're trying to uphold the standards of the theater without knowing how truly hard it is to write a play. <laughs> the movies and television. The theater, yes! What's going on, dudes? <laughs> Down, boss! I'm supposed to be getting Lady Gaga her coat. What's <laughs> my humble servant, sir? What's your name, Bluff? Gus. 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 <laughs>
What did he have? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be mixed. Mm -hmm. Already a somewhat endangered species, something very close to a death blow. <laughs> I bet he liked it. That's <laughs> okay, so yeah, okay. It tarnishes the reputation of everyone connected with it. Not permanently, perhaps, but certainly within their lifetime. <laughs>
himself lucky to be out of this turkey due to his commitments to his enormously popular television series. I must admit I'm mad for it, but don't tell my colleagues. Out on the lab! Live, damn it, live! It's funny, I thought I was the star of this thing. Don't worry, honey, he'll get to you. You went bananas tonight! <laughs> Virginia Noyes, making a welcome return to the New York stage. Yes. After a tabloid stain stint in Hollywood, including an Oscar for her controversial performance as an autistic social worker in Bed-Stuy Sunset. <laughs> she wasn't autistic. <laughs> Die America, I Hate Your Stupid Guts, Capitalist Pigs, which I caught at the Donmar Warehouse last spring. <laughs> has me practically tumescent, but I digress. <laughs> Back to Miss Noy. Here you go, Jenny. She wears out her welcome in her very first scene. <laughs> Lines. After that, it's downhill all the way. She reminds me of nothing so much as a female impersonator in search of a female to impersonate. That's out and out plagiarism! At one point, when she went into sort of a dance, my theater going companion said, My God! This is worse than genital herpes. <laughs> I hope by the time she reads this, she is headed back to acting rehab. Bon voyage and good riddance, Miss Noyes. But that's terrible. Just terrible. <laughs> He didn't even say I was pretty. <laughs> I always got pretty. <clears throat> even when I wasn't very good, I was pretty. Now I stink, and I'm not pretty. <laughs> and people wonder why people do drugs. <laughs> Does anyone else want to take over? 
Not only was her decision to mount this plague imbecilic, it was also immoral. What possessed you, Mrs. Butter? What possessed any of us? What possessed any of you? <laughs> Have I left anyone up? Everyone's favorite director? Oh, yes. The direction of Frank Finger. I've been waiting for this. It's been a long time coming. Go ahead. I'm ready. Long the most brilliant of our younger directors, his production of Titus Andronicus and Rada has attained legendary status in certain circles. Wretched me, I didn't see it. Lord Finger, I know I'm jumping the gun with his investiture, but what the hell, gives us another stunning production. <laughs> he makes poetry on a tilted disc. The actors could have stood on it all night for this Finger file. Congratulations, Sir Frank. Bravo, Tarzan! Bravo! Finger file. Finger file. Finger this! <laughs> I never heard such bullshit. Want a tray? <laughs> what is it, my books? Do they all want to have violent sex with me and a blind to the work? Is it my personality? I can't help it. I was born charismatic! <laughs> Besides, I bet they're striking the scenery at the very more this very moment. What does that mean, striking? Taking it down. <laughs> Unless, of course, it hasn't already collapsed out of sheer embarrassment. <laughs> oh well, onwards and upwards with the arts. That's it. I think it's important that we all love one another very, very much. <laughs> what was I thinking? Doing a play. What do they call those people at startup? Barista? <laughs> they always look happy. <laughs> Harvey Firestein. <laughs> Seeing you people like this is a genuine hurt. I'm sorry more critics can't share this experience. Oh, fuck off, Mr. Who! I am sorry, but please. <laughs> Back home, you write something like that about people and you're gonna get your ass whooped. I'd be happy to stop that pecker's butt good for a Mrs. Butter. Just say the word. Thank you, boss. That's an ugly thought. <laughs> no, we don't do things like that in the theater. We don't do anything. We pretend nothing happened, and then we suck up to the very same people all over again. Popular mechanics just came in. <laughs> Did you hear the one about the actor who was playing Hamlet? 
He barely we got to be or not to be with the audience. Started booing, and he couldn't hear himself. Finally, he stepped forward and said, "I didn't write this shit." <laughs>
I think it's a terrible idea to move the Tony Awards to London to save them the trip. <laughs>
made me a star. You were on a streetcar named Goldberg before my blood. It's funny how the first thing that anyone talks about is my performance. And I think you'll revive and salvage what's left of your reputation. Grown men! But provide you with a more masculine presence that cuts deeper. You know what? Harvey did. Yes, I know! Close leaves at the right left and Harvey went in. That wasn't Harvey's fault. There was a big strike on at the time. You P.S. for Christ's sake! A big fat fucking turkey. Gobble, 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 gobble. <laughs> well, this is a wrap for our friendship. Oh, yeah. It should have happened five years ago. Come on, Tim! I'd rather not have produced this play than to see this. Yes, boys? If I had a best friend, I'd treasure him. It's the Schubert's. Those cultures. Close this play, Julia. Who said anything about closing? It's crossed your mind. Don't deny it. Of course it has. No one's not stupid. <laughs> Hello? Mr. Schubert. Well, if your name isn't Schubert, why does everyone call you the Schuberts? Don't well, raise your voice to me, Mr. Wangle. I produced this play and I can close it. That's my Julia. That's a little more like it. Listen, darling, whoever you are, we are in an absolute state of shock about the times, but I haven't thrown in the towel. I'm a fighter. I'd like to find a way to lower our weekly operating costs. Do we really need all those stage hands? Our set doesn't move. We don't even have a curtain to raise in our I know that's a good question. I thought maybe you could answer it. What about all those men playing poker in the basement? <laughs> I know they're musicians. We are not a musical. <laughs> you don't want to go messing with the unions. If your hands are tied, what about mine? Oh, I see. I see. I see. If we get the theater away tonight, they'll give it to River Dance Eleven. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. 
A review like that would keep me going for the rest of my life. <laughs> Virginia Noyes is a luminescent actress. She brings a touching dignity and an emotional honesty to her role, which is a huge step forward from her screen persona. Welcome back to the theater, Miss Noyes. That sounds good. <laughs> Brilliant. Sir Frank Finger's direction, oh, don't even bother, escapes me, the play, and the production. Do you want to repeat that? Long the most overrated talent I know, the Queen was clearly having a senior moment when she put him on her honors list. Mr. Finger is one emperor who isn't wearing any clothes. Would someone take away this man's green card and send him back to Mother England? We fought a revolution. We rid ourselves of assholes like him. The New York Post. Thank you, New York Post. Finally got what I wanted. I hate it. <laughs> Who does that critic think he is anyway? <clears throat> My father! Good boy, bad boy. Go play some rugby with your mates instead of playing with bleeding puppets. <laughs> When your old dad can't even read his own name. He can't read his own name. <laughs> I know. Oh. 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 <laughs> the biggest mistake of my entire life was taking you to that bloody Christmas bed door. I want to be Peter Pan, Daddy. I want to fly. <laughs> I'll teach you how to fly, you little lump of nothing. Oh. Oh! Ah! 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 Ta-da! Okay. That felt great. I've got an appointment with Mildred tomorrow. Here, I don't need these anymore. What's in them, Richard? My God! <laughs> A meatball hero! <laughs> you hear all that buzz? You made one person very happy. Rest, rest, perturbed spirit. <laughs> Thanks, mate. What about the weeklies? Time Magazine doesn't review shows that have already closed. <laughs> we haven't closed. Newsweek left after the first act. New York left during the first day. Get yeah, to the New Yorker, they have always been good to me. But they're coming the second night, if there is one. <laughs> Should he cancel the balloon? I guess that's the ball game of us. Oh, I'm very disappointed in his services. He just told me he cleaned. <laughs> For what it's worth. And the out of town tryout, the original Harvey, was a giraffe. <laughs> Changing him to an invisible rabbit happened walking across the Boston Common after a Saturday bad day. Well, poor you. Won't you go downstairs and ask everyone to leave? Tell them the party's over. You heard Mr. Brantley, onwards and upwards. I'll tell you one thing, Mr. Drew. God punishes people who do plays on Broadway. He punishes them good. 
the Spark, the invented regional theater. <laughs> New York is my regional theater. It's the only one I have. I, I don't know what people want to play anymore. Other than 90 minutes, no intermission, and someone they've been told is a star. <laughs> Soon 
I'll match them in green now. <laughs> <laughs> nobody in all the laws know with that there is a Yo, 
playing could be done on Peter's disc, you said. With only the slightest of modifications. Load in cost, load out cost, you couldn't charge either one. We're already there. Virginia, Frank, Julia, come on. Jimmy? Tell me about the man. <laughs> His name is Fred Brown. Fred Brown. But that could be changed along with the title. Clap of Doom! I've always wanted to produce a play called Clap of Doom. <laughs> something that's never been attempted before, and it scares the shit out of me. Are you ready to be frightened? Check this out from Kamikaze Theater. Two actors on a bare disc. Somebody enters that's about it, yeah, man. and puts a script in their hands. No rehearsals, no previews, nothing. Instant theater. We can open tomorrow. You're not being lying, friend. I don't like my actors getting stale. I don't get stale. I like them. I like them. I love them. It's brilliant, Mr. Frank. But that's exactly the idea behind Blue Stocking. The play is set in the rehearsal situation. The actors are meant to be carrying their scripts. It's part of my concept. Your concept? Mm -hmm. Who's directing this play? We need more scripts. They're right downstairs. I want you to go downstairs and tell the rest of the staff that we are not to be disturbed. OK, but that's it, darling. I'm in rehearsal. <laughs> It's about a leading man who's, who's forgotten how to play. 
And a best friend who makes me the best fighter that I am. It's about an actress who is her own natural eye and can turn the biggest theater into a room where you can hear a few drop because everyone is stopped breathing. It's about a producer who trusts us to give her the best that we can and who can raise money and not give us too many notes because of it. It's about a director who's smart enough to keep us all on the same page and who can maybe lead us to where there is glory. Everything I want or need is right in this room. Even you, Mr. Drew. I'm staying put, Mr. Schubert. <coughs> what the hell your name is? I'm putting my finger in the dike and holding back the nut. <laughs> Go. And 